everybody. Lovely to see you all for story time today. My name's Amanda. And I'm Daniel. And with me today, we also have Sammy, who's super duper excited to have story time with all of you today. Hi, Sammy. Lovely to see you. Well, let's see what we're going to do today. We have lots of fun things planned and a very lovely book for you. So welcome to story time. We'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land that we're each on today. And remember that the elders past, present and emerging uh, have looked after our land for thousands and thousands of years, uh, caring for the trees and the flowers and the plants of all kinds and the animals, birds, insects, the sky, the stars, the moon. And they've told beautiful, amazing stories also for thousands and thousands of years. I'm coming to you today from the land of the Gandangara people. What's your land, Daniel? I'm on the land of the Gadigal people. I wonder which land you're on today, those of you listening at home or at your early childhood centre. Maybe you can ask your grown-ups and you can acknowledge the traditional owners of where you are today. Let's see what's on for our story time session today. This is a schedule that shows you all the things that we're going to do. So we're going to sing a hello song in a moment. Then we're going to remember what what uh, share some of the things that you um, remember from last week that you might have shared with us, remembering last week's story, which was about animals. Then I'm going to get my box. I only have a little box today and see if you can guess from what's in my box, what might be in our story today. Then we'll have the story and after that some activities and talk about what you might like to share with us next time and then we're going to sing another song to say goodbye. So I think it's time to sing hello and I'm going to get my ukulele. Daniel with a bit of help from Sammy is going to share with us some special clapping for this song so you can follow Daniel with the clapping and I'll play this up the ukulele. Hello everyone, hello everyone, how are you today? Hello everyone, hello everyone, how are you today? sing hello to all the children and we'll use a different hello. We've said hello which is an English word. How about this time we say hola which is a Spanish word for hello. Here we go. Hola children, hola children, how are you today? Hola children, hola children, how are you today? grown-ups this time. This time we can say a hello in Mandarin, one of the languages of China. Ni hao. Ni hao da grown-ups. Ni hao grown-ups. How are you today? Ni hao grown-ups. Ni hao grown-ups. How are you today? Bye.
we've said hello, I think it's time for us to share the, some of the things that people have sent in. Remember last week we had that very lovely story about animals and some people have sent in some pictures or photos or drawings of their pets or of some special animals near where they live. So Daniel's going to share with us. Oh yes, we have some fantastic pictures. This one came from Brian from Waratah Kindi and he sent us a picture of his pet dog in the backyard. Oh my goodness, it looks very sunny outside, doesn't it? Hmm. And then, let's see what else we found. Oh my goodness. And Jaden from Rose Room, from the Rose Room at the same kindy also has a very similar dog. And where do you think it is? Hmm. It looks like the back of the car, doesn't it? Mm. Is it wearing a doggy seatbelt? Oh, I think it is. Good spotting, Amanda. Yeah, it's even important for all of us to wear our seatbelts when we go for a drive, but also important for our dogs to wear a seatbelt. Oh, well, thank you, Jaden. Thank you for sharing that photo with us. And I have one to share too that came from uh, Ruby. And I can't share screen. Um, that's all right, Amanda. Actually, Ruby also sent me the picture, so I can share that on our screen here now. Ooh, looks like some pictures of, of uh, ducks. Would you like to talk about what Ruby sent to us, Amanda? Yes, apparently she sees all these ducks when she goes to the park near her house. How many ducks are there today? So many. Can you see the white ducks? I wonder if you can count how many white ducks there are there. There's one near the water. Another one a little bit higher up the bank and another one back near the path. So one white duck, two white ducks, three white ducks. Oh, three white ducks and lots of grey and brown ducks. Thanks for sending that one in Ruby. Lovely for us to count the ducks because today we might be doing some counting in our story. My box here has some things that give us a hint about what might be in the story today. So I'll show you. Oh, Sammy, would you like to see what's in the box? Oh my okay. goodness, I would love Taking to. Taking off the lid. And first, I have a balloon in the box. Do you like balloons, Sammy? I wonder if you children like balloons. You can blow balloons up until they're very big and tie them up or let them go and they make a sound. Can you hear? That's a funny noise, isn't it? And if you pop them accidentally, they make a big bang that can give us a shock. I wonder what else is in my box. So I think we're going to have balloons in the story. I found some papers with numbers. There's this number. Do you know what that number says? It says one. And this number says 
two, which comes after one. And do you know what comes after two when you're counting things? That's right. Can you see Daniel's got three fingers up there? Three. So our story today has a lot about counting and I think there might be some balloons. So look out for when we see the balloons. I'll get the book and let's read the story. Today's story is called Waiting for Hugo. Can you see balloons? There's a lot of balloons on the cover. The story is written by Amanda Nyland with illustrations by Claire Richards. And this is Hugo, and this is Hugo's sister. We don't actually know what her name is. Let's read the story. Waiting for Hugo. Here's Hugo's sister and she's saying, hurry up Hugo. You see what she's got there? You have to eat ice creams quickly, don't you? Otherwise they drip everywhere. Hugo isn't listening. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He goes counting. He's counting his breakfast cereal. My brother Hugo likes to take his time. He likes to count things. I wonder what he's counting here. That's right. He's counting shoes. Wherever we go, there's always something to count. Ah, what's Hugo counting here? Oh, fish. Can you see the fish? Sammy likes fish. He likes going to the aquarium and seeing the fish in all the fish tanks. And then he likes going to the pet shop. I think this might be the pet shop where Hugo is today. And here, what's Hugo counting along the fence? Can you see those birds? Those seagulls? So, wherever we go, we're always waiting for Hugo. What's he counting here? Snails? Snails come out when it's raining, don't they? And all the family are getting wet while they're waiting for Hugo. Oh dear. What's he doing, the kids at school say to me as Hugo counts the paintings on my classroom wall, the stairs to the library and the bags in the locker room. He likes to count things, I reply. Look at all those paintings. You can count along each row. One, two, three, four, four in each row. Every single school day, Hugo counts the bags in the locker room. Every single school day. There are 24 bags today, says Hugo. Two, not here. I think Hugo remembers counting more bags another day. 
Do you have hooks to hang your bags up if you go to an early childhood centre? Or your big brothers and sisters might have hooks for hanging up their bags at their school? Good counting, I say to Hugo. But really, secretly, I really wish he wouldn't. Hugo knows that 52 trolleys go in the trolley bay outside the supermarket. He knows that 48 bottles of milk fit into the refrigerator at our corner store. So there's the trolleys. I'm sure you've seen trolleys like that if you go to a supermarket. Maybe you sit in the special child seat in the trolley. Or maybe you help push. Or maybe you go to a shop where they have small trolleys for children so they can have their own shop trolley. Those are great. And there's the shop with all the bottles of milk. Hugo's lining them up in nice straight rows in his mind. That helps him count. knows that there are 17 gum trees at the park across the road. That looks like a rather nice park, doesn't it? And he knows that there are 392 bricks in our neighbour Mrs Lim's garden wall. Hugo knows a lot about numbers and he only turned four last month. That's a lot of bricks, isn't it? Must have taken him quite a while to count all those bricks. This weekend, our school is having a spring fair. I've saved up $5 to spend and I'm meeting my best friends there by the giant slides. Oh, they sound fun, don't they? I can't wait. She's very excited. Does Hugo have to come, I ask Dad. Maybe he'd rather go to the park and count the fence posts. But Hugo has to come, doesn't he? Because he's part of the family. When we arrive at the school for the fair, there's a balloon stand right near the front gate. And guess what Hugo does? Oh, Sammy, would you like one of those balloons? It's fun having a balloon on a string, isn't it? As long as you don't let go. I wonder which colour balloon you'd like. I think I'd like a green balloon. Oh. It must have been quite hard for Hugo to, cut, to count those balloons. I think Sammy would love a green balloon too. Okay. Green's good, isn't it, Sammy? I wonder what colour balloon you'd like. My mum says to me, off you go and have fun. We'll see you back here at two o'clock. I check the time on my watch and nod. Because the fair's just in the school playground, so it's quite safe to go away from the grown-ups for a little while to do all the fun things that are there. My friends find their families and go home. Oh, I missed a page. Oh dear, I need to turn more carefully. My friends are waiting at the slides. We have four turns each. One, two, three, four. And then set off to explore all the stalls and rides. At two o'clock with full tummies and empty pockets, we head back to the front gate.
time to go home. Oops. My friends find their families and go home. No one comes for me. I wait and wait and wait. I know why they're late. It's Hugo. He's counting and they can't make him hurry. So I have to wait and wait and wait. I really wish I didn't have a brother who has to count things. First she waited by the merry-go-round. That's a fun place to wait. I hope they had a ride. Then all her friends went and she had to wait all by herself. Waiting feels very long, doesn't it? Sometimes we do have to wait for people and it's hard to wait. She's doing a pretty good job of waiting, I think though. Finally, I see mum, dad and Hugo. Sorry we're late, but look what we've got. Hugo won a prize for counting. Of course he did. There are 236 lollies in this jar, exactly, said Hugo. Look at that big jar of lollies. It's as big as Hugo is. Wow. That's a lot of lollies to eat. Pretty good counting for someone who only turned four last month. We are all very proud of Hugo. And guess what? As well as winning 236 lollies, he also won first prize in the Spring Fair raffle. So he had a lucky ticket. Hugo chose a special ticket number, says mum. 84, cause you're eight and I'm four, says Hugo. Time to go home. So they're in the car and look, the jar of lollies is so big it needs its own seat belt. My goodness. I think those lollies will last a very long time. What do you think, Daniel? And I hope the children clean their teeth after they have some lollies. We have to look after our teeth. First prize in the raffle is a jumbo sized trampoline. There's lots of springs that help make a trampoline bouncy. So I think they're going to put it all together. You have to build the trampoline first. On Sunday, I do 69 star jumps without count, without stopping. Look at the trampoline. And there she is doing star jumps with her arms out wide and her legs out wide. I wonder if you have a trampoline at your house. Does your trampoline have a net around the edge? Often trampolines do now because that keeps you safe. Otherwise you have to make sure you use Stay jumping near the middle so you don't fall off. 69 star jumps she did. That's a lot of jumps. And guess what Hugo did? Can you guess? Yes, he did. He counted. I'm sure you guessed that right. And that's the end of the story. Thank you for listening to that story. I think we might do some jumping ourselves. And then we'll have a little look back at the story and remember some of the things that Hugo counted. I have a drum here. A drum's a very good thing to listen to when we're jumping. So how about we all do some jumping? But first, you'll need to stand up. Everybody stand up, stand up, stand up. Everybody stand up, just like this. 
And now that you're up, it's time to... Everybody jumping, jumping, jumping. Everybody jumping, just like this. Everybody jumping, jumping, jumping. Everybody jumping, everybody stop. Lovely listening for when to jump and when to stop, Sammy. Very well done, everybody out there. Can you jump a little bit faster this time? Here we go. Everybody jumping, jumping, jumping. Everybody jumping, just like this. Everybody jumping, jumping, jumping. Everybody jumping, everybody stop. Can you do some star jumps this time with your arms out wide? Maybe your legs out wide? Good to have some jumping isn't it like hugo and his sister on that trampoline let's have a little look at the book and see if we can remember some of the things that hugo counted i think he counted some shoes can you remember something else that he counted Maybe grown-ups could write in the chat something that Hugo counted and I'll find the page for you. Do you remember something that Hugo counted, Daniel? Ooh, hmm. Let me ask Sammy. Sammy, can you remember something? Oh, that's right. I think there were some fish in the aquarium or at the pet store that Hugo counted. There were some fish. I'll just find them. Yes, we thought it was at the pet store. There's the tanks with all the fish, different types of fish. I think we know a song about counting fish. Let's sing that song. We need our fingers for this song. Are you ready with your fingers? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Once I caught a fish alive. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I let it go again. Why did you let it go? Because it bit my finger so. Which finger did it bite? This little finger on my right. Ow! Poor finger. Let's sing that one more time and I'll get my ukulele. And Daniel's going to do the fingers so you can copy Daniel. Here we go. Ready with that first finger or thumb, whichever one you want to put up first. Here we go. One, two, three. Once I caught a fish alive Six, seven, eight, nine, ten Then I let it go again Why did you let it go? Because it bit my finger so Which finger did it bite? This little finger on my right That's a nice song about counting fish, isn't it? I wonder if there was one more thing that you can remember 
that he counted. Looking in the chat, I think the children in the Joey rooms remembered that Hugo counted the lollies. I'm going to look for the page with that great big lolly jar. There it is. Nearly as big as Hugo. That's a lot and of lollies. Remember? It is a lot of lollies. If you remember in the car, the lolly jar had its own seat belt. <laughs> Go. Thank you for sharing with us some of the things that you remembered that there were Hugo did counting in this book. I wonder what you'd like to go and count. After story time today, maybe you'd like to go and do some counting. I think I might go and count some coloured pencils because I have lots of coloured pencils. I've got one, two that are green. And then I've got one, two that are red and one, two that are yellow. That's what I'm going to count today. What do you think you and Sammy would like to count today, Daniel? Hmm, that's a good question. Oh, oh, that's very nice. Well, it's such a lovely day outside for us today that Sammy wants to go out and count the pegs on the clothesline. He really loves to pinch them. It's very fun for him. So we're gonna go count the pegs. Okay, so today or any other day before next story time, if you feel like doing some counting, you could draw a picture of your counting or your grown up could help you to take a photo of what you counted and send it in to us and then we can see some of the lovely counting that you all did next time we come to story time. It's nearly time for us to say goodbye now but Daniel's going to show us on the screen. Ooh, I have a clue for next week. We're gonna we're going to start some stories and we're going to talk a little about it a bit about something that you can see on the screen right now. Can you guess what it might be? Some animals from a very, very long time ago. Do you know what they are? We can't hear what you're saying, but I think we can see some people saying dinosaurs. If you have some toy dinosaurs, or some pictures of dinosaurs that you'd like to hold up to your screen and show us next week, you can do that. And you can see if the dinosaurs that you have at your house or at your early childhood center are like the dinosaurs in our book. So we are going to be very excited to see you again next week. And now it's time for us to sing our song to say goodbye. You can wave goodbye while we sing this song. Sammy and Daniel are going to wave goodbye. Now it's time to sing goodbye, sing goodbye, sing goodbye. Now it's time to sing goodbye, sing goodbye to story time. Goodbye, Sammy. Bye, see everybody. Goodbye, children. Bye, children. Bye, everybody. Thanks for coming. Goodbye, grown ups. Bye, grown ups. Bye. It was so lovely sharing our story with you today. Thank you for coming. Goodbye, everyone. See you next story time. Thanks for coming, everybody. Goodbye.